Welcome to The Power of Mistakes, How to Learn and Grow Even When You Get Things Wrong. I'm Chrissy Foskett and I'm the owner of BD365 Limited, which is a cleaning company I set up three years ago with my husband, covering Glasgow and Edinburgh, all across the central part of Scotland and also more recently into the northeast of England as well. I'm also a founding director of the Domestic Cleaning Business Network, which is a trade association set up specifically to help UK cleaning business owners throughout all the challenges that we all face every day when we're growing our business. And it's also there to support them and to give them the tools they need to grow. And finally, in addition, I'm also a director of the Domestic Cleaning Academy, which is a new online training academy, specifically creating cleaning courses for business owners within the cleaning industry and cleaners, covering everything from recruitment, marketing, setting up, how to grow, how to grow, right through to the physical side of your day-to-day cleaning and selecting the right products to use. So in this video, I'm going to be talking today about how to make the most of the mistakes that we all make, how to learn from the mistakes that we make, and also how to avoid making the mistakes that are going to actually impact and stop your business from growing. So hopefully, like many of you, I watched last year's Maid Summit um, through Zen Maid, and I learned so much. I must have watched every single um, talk now, and I've gone back and re-watched them because I did by the past as well. So when Amar got in contact with me and asked me if I wanted to speak at this year's calls, I was absolutely thrilled. I really was. Um, and then I was stumped straight afterwards, uh, pretty much about what I was going to talk about. And it's weird because over the last year, I've helped cleaning businesses and stood up in front of hundreds of people talking to them about marketing, recruitment, winning new business, and more recently doing a series of courses specifically tailored to guide cleaning business owners who are going back to work with COVID-19. But I wanted to do something that's a little bit more sexy, a little bit more fun, something that was going to be exciting for the Maid Summit. So I asked all the members of the Domestic Cleaning Business Network, the Trade Association, what they wanted to hear about. And the overwhelming response was actually about my story and how I got to where I am. So to put it into a little bit of context, um, we, my husband and I, we grew our business from absolute zero uh, to just over £250,000 turnover in just over two years. Um, this year, if COVID hadn't have been around, we would have smashed £400,000. Um, this year, we'll probably do just shy of £300,000 even with COVID, and that's having been shut down for a couple of months. So it kind of makes sense to talk about how I got to where I am now um, and to give everyone watching really that little nudge to sort of say, do you know what, if I can do it, so can you. So I've always been someone to really kind of analyse what we do as a business and to look at the figures and the results. So when I look back at our business and how we've grown, I kind of look at the milestones that have helped shape and get us to where we actually are as a business. And when I was doing that, what I realized was is that a lot of the milestones and the turning points are actually based upon mistakes or business critical points, as we call them, not mistakes, um, that had happened in our business. And what I realized is actually it was through making these mistakes and changing what we were doing that had really enabled us to turn them into opportunities to do better within our business. And from a mindset point of view, reframing it as not calling it a mistake, calling it a business opportunity or you know a challenge to try and find a solution to actually makes dealing with it a much more positive focus as opposed to being a regretful one which is typically how we see mistakes being so we all make mistakes when we start out you know there's no, no bones about that at all every single one of us would have made a mistake of some kind in our business as we go through now I kind of jokingly say to people that I've made every mistake going in the book that you can do within this industry. Um, and during the recent online training we've been doing, we've been talking about risk assessments and you know how to prepare your business for going back to work. We did quite a big talk about all the things that could possibly go wrong when you're cleaning. So getting locked out, getting locked in, broken fixtures, pets escaping, letting the wrong pets in, equipment failure, lost keys, staff going AWOL. Um, yeah, I've kind of had all of those and then some more as well, which has been great. Um, and they are all mistakes. They're all things that could go wrong and in my case have gone wrong in our business. And it's really, really hard when we start out. There's no idiot's guide to getting a cleaning business up and running and making zero mistakes book. If there was, I'd have bought it quite happily by now. Um, in fact, I would probably slept with it and read with it every single night going through my business. But 
what I did is that every time something went wrong, I would kind of look at it. I'd look at why it went wrong. I would look at what I could do to fix it. More importantly, I would look to do, see what I could do to prevent it from going wrong again. And it's this thought process that we then need to document down. And it becomes a process or a policy that we could then follow as a business and implement and make sure that we're following it so we didn't keep making the same mistakes twice. So if trying to chase a dog down the road because the door hasn't been shut properly ended up in our policy to maintain the wellness of your pet during cleaning, fantastic. We then sold that as a selling pit tool. You know, it's a major feature to our clients that we were so conscientious about the welfare of your pet. It wasn't the fact that we didn't want to go running up and down the road chasing after it. It was all about your pet and making sure it was okay. And that then meant that all pets had to be securely put away when we, before we arrived to the house. Otherwise, we wouldn't clean to solve the problem for us straight away. So after a mistake um, where a shower door had fallen on me at a client's, we then introduced a policy where we would go through. And as part of our first 15 minutes of every claim, which was chargeable to the client, we would document everything that was possibly wrong within the property. We would give the client a list of it and we'd also give them the telephone number of a really friendly handyman who could come in and fix their problems for them. We worked on a referral scheme with the handyman. It's a win-win situation all round. So again, we took something that had kind of gone wrong. We looked at what we could do to stop it from going wrong. So we had this sort of in-house inspection that we put into place and then we sold a solution for it as well. So we wouldn't have to deal with it. So again, you know, one mistake became an opportunity to avoid this happening again and for us to make money for. Now, in both of these instances, you know, and these were very early days, I'm talking just like a couple of weeks before we sort of started, <laughs> when we got the business started, I looked around for policies that I could kind of steal, borrow, tweak um, to put into place or ideas that could help me. And, you know, here in the UK, even, you know, as little as a couple of years ago, there wasn't a lot of resources available. The cleaning industry has really boomed here in the UK over the last couple of years. And actually the support networks that are available are much, much better than what they were before. Um, but in the end, what happened was is I ended up just writing my own policies because I couldn't find anything off the shelf to sit there and work with. Now, within my role with sort of the DCBN, Domestic Cleaning Business Network, you know, there is somewhere that cleaning business owners can go and get these ready to use documents that you can literally just download put your email address on put your company address on put your logo on it and they're ready to use you know so if there are resources available to you go out find them and use them if they aren't you know write them yourselves they're not particularly difficult to sit there and do and you know if you've got these policies in place and you know the more policies that you put into place when you start and you get up and running actually the easier it is to run your business. It might feel like a lot of paperwork from day one, but it will make your life easier. And remember, the best mistake is actually the one that you actually avoid making in the first instance. So that's a little bit about making the most about your mistakes, but learning from mistakes is also absolutely crucial. So for me, within the business, the, learn, the biggest learning curve that I had was actually learning about costs and timing. So you know, I've been there. I'm sure every single one of you who are watching have been there as well. So you've gone in, you've quoted, quoted your very first property and whether it's done face to face or over the phone, you agree your rate, you agree a set amount of time on it. You're over the moon that you've won your first client and they're actually going to buy from you and you're going to go in and clean that. It's amazing. And, you know, you set your date in the diary, you pop it in your schedule and then you arrive for your first claim and you open up the front door and you're like, OK, is this actually the same house? Um, has their hoover kind of broken since I came in to do my viewing two weeks ago? Um, did they get like a five minute warning? They've just abandoned this property. You know, 90 minutes into your first two hour claim, you're still in the kitchen. You know, we've all been there. And, you know, it's a simple mistake that we all make very early on about getting our times wrong. And it can cause so much chaos and disruption. You know, do you stay longer to finish the job? Do you charge the customer for the extra time? Do you just leave? Um, if you stay, your schedule's rock, gone wrong for the rest of the day. Is the customer's going to give you a bad review? Now, I used to feel physically sick, sort of going through these little conversations in my head, deciding what we were going to do and you know, how we were going to get around it. And where we were lucky is that when it was happening to us, it was just myself and my husband out and cleaning. You know, we were both self-employed. It wasn't too bad. Um, but as soon as you've got staff on board, 
um, under quoting becomes, especially on time, becomes so much more problematic because you've got more issues with costs, your scheduling, you know, you, you if you're paying by the job, it's different to paying by the hour. There's all of these things that you need to look at. Um, so when it is just you, it is easier to put into place. So as a business, you know, and we wanted to be a business, not just be two self-employed cleaners going out. We had to do something to help us stop making these mistakes. Um, so, you know, this was a continuous learning program that we had to follow. You know, we kind of realized that different types of houses would have different variables to work with. So end of tenancy claims will always take at least double whatever the client thinks it's going to take, no matter what they say. Um, first time claims, you always need at least an hour more than what you're thinking it's going to be. Um, you know, I started telling clients not to actually clean before the cleaner came to actually have a look and see what the house was like because I used to walk into these beautifully immaculate houses and then when I come in to clean the first time, nothing like it at all. You know, so I kind of had this little saying with them, you know, please don't clean before we come out and quote. We kind of want to see you in your natural habitat so it doesn't cause any problems later on. So we kind of put these policies and just ways of working into place, but we still have mistakes where it would be wrong and, you know, we didn't want that to happen. So what we did, again, it was a lot of analysis. It was looking at what was going wrong and what was going right, is we record, recorded every quote, every new job that we were working on. And we had, yeah, I say a simple spreadsheet. It had lots of columns on it. So just like the house address, number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, you know, rating out of 10 as to how good or how bad it was. Um, and literally just put down what our estimate was. And then we'd actually go back and put how long it actually took us to do the claim at the end. And we were able to track that. We were using ZenMade at the time. So we had all GPS trackings in and out of what we could do. And what that gave us was actually the knowledge and the information to be able to create our own quoting tool. So now I can take any property. And to give you an example, we've just recently done a huge batch of sort of HMO student lets, about 120 of them in about a four week period. Um, and of those 120 properties, we had a 94% accuracy on the time estimate that we worked on for them. So it is about sort of using the information you've got, what you can do to make your business better later on. Now, I'm still working on that other 6% because knowing your numbers is absolutely vital to having a successful business. So another mistake that took time to learn from for us as well was route planning and time management. Um, so again, when you're just starting out and it's just you going out to clients, you know, yeah, you can go over here for one client, you can go over there for your next client on it. It's not too bad, you know, you can claim the mileage back, it's, you know, it's all nice and easy to sit there and work with. Um, and, and you'll do what it takes to bring the clients on board and to keep the clients happy, right? Wrong. You know, when you employ staff, that five minute journey between clients sometimes always becomes 15. Doesn't matter, you could give them a route, you could give them step by step directions, that time is going to double if not triple in some instances on it and then if you're working on the basis where you've got teams going out to claim well you know that 15 minute journey it's just actually cost you 30 minutes in time on wages um you know yes we can get more cleans in during the day and we had teams doing sort of like five or six cleans a day at one point but actually we weren't getting rich from it you know when we looked at the numbers you know pay or payroll income I was like, hang on a minute there's not a lot left here so we went through, we analysed the numbers, we worked out the actual true cost to our business on a two-week rota. So we looked at, you know, start times, end times, travel times, how long in the claims, every single factor was going into it, mileage, the whole lot. And we then compared that with the teams, but if we split it into two solo routes and how we would organise that. We took a couple of the outlying customers out that were maybe, you know, they're our favourites, we love cleaning for them, but... Do you know what, doing them on that day because that's the only day that they could have it wasn't working for us. So to give you a bit of an example, we had a thousand pound a week run, two cleaners going out and doing the clean as a team. But our payroll costs on that, including sort of like travel time and everything, was running at about 82%. You know, it was absolutely horrific. No wonder we weren't making any money once you factor in your insurance, your software costs, you know, all your fuel and everything else as well. So by switching it over to the solo routes, it actually dropped straight away down to 68, 69%. Um, and when we implemented that and we put it into place, we actually found that cleaners were actually spending less time between jobs. They didn't have anyone to chat to in between jobs. So we actually got that down even further. Um, so we then rewarded our staff by giving them a pay rise. 
So yes, we were putting our sort of costs up a little bit, but by giving our staff a pay rise, it made them feel a lot more valued by what they were doing. And, you know, they actually started referring other staff to come and work for us as well. So it did work really well for us. So, you know, those mistakes that we made early on by kind of, yes, Mr. Customer, we'll do everything that you want us to do, Mr. Customer, you know, they were costing us money as a business. Um, so by continually looking at what you do, you know, you might it might not be an obvious mistake that's just happened then and there, but by evaluating what you're doing in a business, seeing if you are making any of these mistakes or errors that you can actually fix and rectify, you are actually going to make your business an awful lot stronger. It's also really important to try and learn from other people's mistakes as well. Um, it's not just the mistakes that you make that you can learn from. Um, you know, as I said earlier, the best mistakes are the ones that you avoid. And being part of a wider cleaning community, like the Zen Made Mastermind community on Facebook, the Domestic Cleaning Business Network um, group that we've got, and all of the other cleaning groups and forums and associations that are out there, um, I see lots and lots of challenges that other cleaning companies face on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'm always looking to sort of say, oh, that's something that I've not thought of. Maybe I could put something in place in my business that's going to avoid that, or you know, I might need to consider that. Um, so for example, I saw a post not long after I started my business in another group about a company sort of getting worried that they were going to get fined for not having a waste carrier's license. And I was like, okay, what's a waste carrier's license? Um, why do I need one? Um, you know, no one told me that I needed a license to bring my Hoover with dust in it back into my car when I started cleaning. You know, this is information that should have been readily out there for us, and we had to find it out through someone else. Um, another potential mistake, or another mistake that we see quite a lot, and if anyone's part of sort of like the cleaning tips and tricks groups, or you know, you know, a lot of the Mrs. Hinch groups which are out there as well, is the use of the wrong products and wrong surfaces, and you know, it's disastrous results. Sometimes it really is. Um, it's, it's become a lot more prevalent. There's a lot of people out there now that are self-confessed cleaning gurus saying, this is what you should do. This is what you shouldn't do. Don't do this. Do this. Use this. Um, you know, your black carpet on your chrome is your typical one that you see over here for getting that out. And, you know, I spoke to my insurance company. I was like, OK, this actually happens quite a lot. Someone said this. What if this goes wrong? I rang my insurance company and he's like, well, no, you've got to kind of read your safety data sheets. And I'm like, what's a safety data sheet? kind of find out, yeah, legally need to carry those as well when we're going out cleaning. Again, that wasn't in my Idiot's Guide to Cleaning book that should have been written a long time ago for us. Um, so it is really important that you kind of learn these things and you find out what is happening in the industry and make sure that you're you know, learning from other people's mistakes as much as you can. We all make mistakes every single day. I've told you loads of mine already and there's probably a fair few more that are, um, come out at some stage. But I'm genuinely not anyone who will ever turn around and admit that I'm perfect at all. I'm really, really proud of the mistakes that I've made in some ways because it's actually enabled me to make me who I am and get my business to where it is right now. So I actually do have a life coach. Um, I know that she's going to be watching now as well. Um, and one of the things that she kind of levels at me is that I'm far too hard on myself. And I think this is something that a lot of us have. And do you know what? She's right. I am really, really harsh on myself. I'm really self-critical. Um, I doubt myself hugely a lot of the times on it. You know, I even doubted if I was qualified enough to actually come up here and speak on this summit to all of you guys. And, you know, when you're up with the likes of sort of Debbie Sardone and Pam Washington and everyone who's out there, you're like, wow, to sit here is a massive honor. Should I be here? Um, but the one thing that I kind of realized through working with her and through the success of my business and helping other people with their businesses as well is that actually it's my self-doubt, it's my lack of belief in myself at times that actually drives me to be better. It really does push me to force myself into challenging situations and throw myself in the deep end. And everyone will know if there's something that someone says to me, oh, that can't be done, I'm the first person to say, yeah, I'll find a way to make it happen. You know, for me, I want to be the best. And I think many of us do. We want to have the best cleaning business we possibly can. We want to be better than all the other cleaning businesses in our area. You know, and I personally want to be recognized as being successful. Now, some people come into, you know, we all come into this industry for different reasons. Some people come into it for to have a really good work-life balance. Some people because they love cleaning. Um, me, I came into it through necessity. I genuinely needed to make some money and I needed to make some money fast. Um, and for me, it was a quick way of doing it. 
with minimal setup costs, minimal expenditure, um, and a really quick sort of pay and return. The customer's kind of paying you on the day. It's like fantastic. What's not to love? But I very quickly realized that actually this is a sustainable business that I could use all of my previous business skills and experience in recruitment and project management to scale up this business and to do it quickly as well. So like many of you, when I started out, I printed a whole load of business cards, a million leaflets, fly posters them everywhere it felt like, did a few Facebook book posts and I started getting calls in. Fantastic. And I would go to a potential client's house and I would walk around, I would have a chat and I'd basically convince them they needed me. They needed me to come in clean, their house is filthy, yet we were going to solve all of their problems for them. And then I made the same mistake that we all do when we're starting out. I completely undervalued myself. I'd get really nervous about the price. I'd be like, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. And that'd be £10 an hour. Is that okay? Is that okay? Asking the customer if they're happy to pay an amount. Um, you know, yes, honestly, I started out at £10 an hour. I won my first four clients at that price and then it clicked. I was winning these clients because I was too damn cheap. Um, you know, so I was like, okay, well, I'll put my price up. I'm going to go out and put my price up. And then I was like, Oh no, I can't do that. You know, I'm just new. I've just started. You know, I've got no experience. You know, no one's going to believe that I can do it. You know, how on earth could I justify putting my price out with someone who's only gone out and really done four cleans at that stage? So, you know, I stuck with the price. I went out. I won another sort of four or five customers at that price. And I set myself a challenge. At that stage, I was like, okay, I'm going to go out and I'm going to get my next client at £11 an hour. So the final part of this talk is about avoiding making mistakes yourself that are going to stop your business from growing. So we all make mistakes every day. You know, I'm not someone who will ever admit that I'm perfect. I'm actually quite proud of some of the mistakes that I've made in its weird way because they've actually made me and my business who we are today. Um, now, I do have a life coach and I know she's watching today and she is the first person to say that I am far too hard on myself and she's right. You know, I'm incredibly self-critical. I doubt myself huge amounts and, you know, I even doubted if I was qualified enough to actually come up and talk to everyone here um, about a subject. You know, it was really, it was a really weird position to be in. But the one thing that I have actually realized is that it's this self-doubt that I have that I actually try and channel to drive myself on and drive push myself further and to be better. It forces me to challenge situations. You know, I want to be the best. I'm sure you all do. You all want to be the best in your industry and what we're doing. We want to be right up there on the top. We want to be the first people that someone will come and contact to speak to us about their cleaning requirements. And for me personally, you know, I want to succeed. I want to be recognized as being success successful. Now, a lot of people come into this industry for many, many different reasons. Some come into it a lifestyle, some because they love cleaning. Mate, hands up, I'll say I came into it because I wanted to make some money and I needed to make some money pretty fast as well. And I saw it, as I think a lot of people do, as a very quick way to get in, minimal startup costs and you know a very quick return on any investment because clients are going to be paying on the day. But I very quickly realized that this was actually going to be a sustainable business that I could use all of my previous business knowledge and skills and experience in sort of project management and recruitment to put myself in a position where I could scale up and scale up fast. So like many of you, I printed some business cards, I did a whole load of leaflets, dropped them everywhere, did a few Facebook posts and started getting calls in. It's fantastic. Now I remember very first client, getting all excited, really nervous at the same time as well and sort of going into the client's house, walking around, so I'm like, you know, talking to the tops of the door frames and you know, checking behind the doors to see if it had been vacuumed properly and, you know, convincing them that they needed me to come in and clean for them. But then I made the same mistake that probably all of us have done from day one. I undervalued myself. You know, I sat there, I told them what a wonderful job we were going to do, how we were the best cleaners out there, how they were never going to be disappointed. And then I kind of sold myself for £10 an hour. And then I asked if that's okay. You know, how crazy is that when you're starting out? It's like, don't go to sort of like my local takeaway and get told it's that. Is that okay to pay that price? No, that's the price. That's what it is. Um, you know, I'd get really nervous about telling customers how much it was going to cost them. 
And, you know, honestly, I started out at £10 an hour. You know, I won my first four clients at that price and I was like, okay, I'm winning clients. This is fantastic. I must be great. And I'm like, no, actually, I'm probably just really cheap in the nicest possible way. And, you know, the reason that was the reason I was winning the clients. Yes, it was because I was you know, a good salesperson. That's going to come into it. But and they bought into what I was saying. Um, but it was going to be down to price. So I thought about putting my prices up. And then I doubted myself. I undervalued myself yet again. Now, in my mind, I was too new, too inexperienced. I only had four clients. You know, I didn't have anyone to kind of call on for references. How on earth was I going to justify going out and putting my price up? So I stayed with the £10 an hour and I won another sort of four or five customers at that price. And I was like, well, okay, so I am getting these customers at these price. Let's give it a go on the next client. And, you know, I set myself a challenge, went into the next client and I said, right, okay, that's going to be £11 an hour. And I won it. So I went into the next one at £12 an hour and I won that one and I kept going and I kept going and there was a couple of no's that came back and I sort of maybe dropped back down a pound, okay, I'm going to get this client. Um, But, you know, within sort of like three months, I was sitting there charging £15 an hour and still winning the business. So the mistake that I made was not actually believing in my own ability Um, or having the self-belief to actually ask for a sensible rate of pay for the work we were doing. But now I had another dilemma, is that I had a schedule that was nearly full. I maybe had two or three slots available on it. I had new customers that were coming in quite happily at the £15 an hour mark, but I still had quite a lot of customers on 10, 11, 12, 13 pounds an hour, which I'm like, well, okay, where do we go with these? But and I was not going to work any less hard at the client who's only paying £10 an hour than I am at the one who's paying £15 an hour. So something had to be done. But I couldn't put my prices up, could I? You know, it's a difficult position to be in. You know, you know, how can I go back to, you know, I've just started, I've only been cleaning there for three months, I might lose them, um, you know, I might get a bad review. You know, I was literally putting my client's objections into my own head straight away. I wasn't worried about them objecting. I was more worried myself about what was going to come through and say. But at the same time, you know, because I was trying to look at this as being a business, how on earth could I ever take on staff so I could continue to grow my business if I'm only charging my client £10 an hour? So something really had to be done. And, you know, I wasn't going to clean for the client forever. That wasn't going to be the solution. So I had to find something that was going to be workable. So I looked at my schedule. I've got two or three gaps available on there. I know I can get a new client at £15. So I went out and I got a new client at £15. So I then went to client number one, very first client that I bought on board. And, you know, I spoke to them and I asked for a pay rise. And it was so scary, so nerve-wracking to sit there and do. And I felt that, you know, it was something that I had to do. I explained to them that they knew that I'd not long started up as a business. um, And I basically told them that I had underpriced it. I told them that my diary was now full. I've got a waiting list coming on board. I was going to have to hire new staff to sit there and cope with the growth. Really thank them for their support, but basically said that in order for me to employ staff and pay them a fair wage, I could not continue to clean for him at £10 an hour. You know, I really hoped that he appreciated this. I hoped that he would want me to pay my new staff members who I was going to train up fully so they understood everything about the client's needs and requirements. Um, but I would need to put my prices up in order to do that. And I remember kind of sitting on my hands as I was sort of almost shaking um, whilst I waited for their answer. And you get that real kind of sick feeling in your stomach. And, you know, people had it. It's still there. But they said yes. So now, not only I've got my new client filling a gap at £15, I'd also raised my existing client up to £15 as well. Fantastic. So I went to the rest of them one at a time. Um, I actually had 15 clients that I needed to put the price up for. So that was kind of 15 gut-churning conversations to sit there and have. Um, And my second one said no. Okay, that's fine. But I'd already actually replaced that client with a new one that I bought on board previously. So actually, I was better off financially by replacing that client, which was fantastic. It made good business sense. The client understood the reasons. They didn't feel that they could justify, you know, what was going to be a £10 increase in every single claim. But by explaining my reasons why to them, you know, put it in writing as well as talking to them about it verbally, 
they couldn't really come back and disagree with me too much. So in total, the 15 clients that we had to raise the prices for, we only lost two, which still left me one extra spare gap in my diary. So I had all my clients up to £15 and additional space as well. But by approaching it the way that I did, it wasn't actually about losing customers. I was much more substituting them for slightly better paying ones as well. So I'd stopped actually the biggest mistake that we all make at first as a new business. I'd stopped undervaluing myself and my ability. Now, I realized that I deserved the rate that I was charging. And I'd actually stopped my lack of confidence by, you know, being a sales barrier to me getting what I wanted to from my customers. Even now, um, you know, three years on from those sort of days, my minimum rate for domestic cleaning is now seventeen fifty an hour plus that on a minimum four hour clean. Um, yeah, that's a fair rate as far as I'm concerned. You know, I like to get higher for shorter cleans, and I do get higher for shorter cleans. But even now, every so often, I just sort of have a bit of a cheeky mood, and I'll go out and I'll just put another fifty p on it when I'm going out to quote, just to try and get a feel for where the market is as well. So a lot of the mistakes that we make can be avoided by changing our mindset. You know, we need to stop putting obstacles. Don't put the customer's objections in your heads before you've even walked in there. Because, you know, if we've got 10 objections in our heads that we're sort of saying, oh, we can't do this, the likelihood is, is the customer is only going to come up with one. Now, just to kind of finish up with, one of my business, my biggest business successes actually came from a mistake um, and then actually ignoring those barriers and my own objections to doing the job. So here in the UK, we have a sales lead platform called Bark. And on this platform, potential customers put their cleaning requirements on and as a supplier, we can basically pay to see the lead details. So I responded to the lead, I'd given the customer a call to talk about what they wanted and the lead made it look like it was a sort of a fairly small two bedroom house and a couple of toilets. Nice and simple, easy job, you know, bread and butter jobs, we love them. So I gave them a call, they asked me to come and visit them and, you know, we went and got the address and I turned up and it was a caravan park and I was like, okay, well, I don't mind cleaning in the caravan, less stairs than in a normal two bed house, easy. You know, perfect, client appeared and then explained to me that their housekeeper had quit in the middle of their busiest season. Festival season in Edinburgh is usually heaving, and they were in a lot of trouble. So they've got 20-odd um, holiday homes. They've got five massive shower blocks, about a 1,000 campers on park, if not more, and they were getting bad reviews. Really not good. And she actually thought that she'd advertised on this platform. Her mistake was is that she thought she was advertising for just cleaners to come and work for her directly. Um, but you know, she's showing me around. I'm kind of like, okay, I'm here now. What do I do? Type thing, and you know, spoke to her about it. And then she offered me a job at national minimum wage, starting at five o'clock the next morning for about the next two to three weeks. This is a temporary job, so I was like, okay. So I kind of explained um, that I was actually there as a cleaning company. Um, you know, had my own business, and I actually remember her face falling, and I felt really bad for her. And I'm like, you know, sorry. I'm, just not happening I'm not going to come and work for international minimum wage and I basically said that I would go away and see if I you know, knew anyone that I thought could maybe help so I got back in the car looked at my husband told him what happened and you know at this stage we've not really branched into commercial we had one little office that was like the office of one of our clients that we kind of cleaned twice a week nice and easy now to us I remember sitting in the car this is way out of our league you know not going to work for minimum wage. I'm not getting up at five o'clock in the morning to go and do cleaning. I'm not going to clean toilets all day. You know, I was going to try and get my money back for this lead that I paid for because, you know, she she posted looking for a cleaner to come and work for her, not actually for a cleaning company. And, you know, we kind of, we drove off. We started driving off and then we got a little way out of the road, kind of looked at each other and we were like, actually, what if we can do this? You know, rather than talking ourselves out of it, we looked at what we could do. So kind of turned around, pulled over. There's a nice little driveway up there that we could do. And we were like, well, we could actually have two people every day there for them. That is feasible. We could be there from five o'clock, even if it was myself and my husband for the first couple of days to get out and running. Um, You know, we could very quickly hire someone or we could, you know, move some jobs around and get staff to come and do it. We could actually charge a fair rate, uh, make them understand sort of how the pricing was that would allow us to make a profit and it would help the client out as well. So kind of drove back up to the main office. So I went into their office, spoke to the lady and I pitched on the spot. And I just explained that we would do 
everything we could to help them out. We didn't want to see them suffering. We know how difficult it is to find good cleaners. Um, gave them the price and they said they'd come back to me. Five o'clock the next morning, there I am cleaning toilets. Two years on now, we are the sole suppliers and all of their products and their staff to the main site there. And I also help out their three other sites as and when needed. So that sort of little simple mistake and, you know, me overcoming the objections and getting rid of the sort of my own barriers to going out and winning business basically resulted in a hundred thousand pounds a year corporate account for us. So a mistake by a client and my avoiding the mistakes I used to make in sort of undervaluing myself resulted in a really fantastic business opportunity that just kind of keeps growing every single year for us. So now you know the mistakes that I've made, and there have been a few, I did warn you there would be, um, but the, the mistakes that have enabled me to get where I am, I want you to do something. I want you to look at mistakes that you've made. I want you to look at what's gone wrong. I want you to look at how you fixed it. I want you to look at what you can do to stop it happening and then how it becomes a benefit. You know, use policies, use templates, you know, join trade associations like the DCBN, you know, use software, use whatever there is out there to sit there and make it work for you. You know, ZenMade have got some fantastic resources, the DCBN have got some fantastic resources for you. As is this entire summit, there's lots and lots of resources out there that you can sit there and use to avoid making a lot of mistakes as well. I want you to all to learn as much as you can about our chosen industry. You know, learn about the products, learn about how to hire the best staff, learn about how to keep the best staff, learn new skills that are going to help you to grow and develop in your business. Learn from other people's mistakes and challenges. You know, use all of these to put your processes into place. Use systems like ZenMade to free up your time, to all to make your business and to give you more time to actually develop and work on yourself as a business. Use the resources we've got at the DCBN to you know, streamline your business, all the template documents that are there. Get training with the Domestic Cleaning Academy that we've got up and running. Do everything you can to be the best that you possibly can be within this industry. Yeah, I want you to see mistakes as being opportunities to change what you do and how you do it. Use the changes that you make as sales tools to show how responsible you are in your business now. See your mistakes as opportunities to be better. It really is. And finally, and most importantly, I want you to realise that by pushing yourself and trying new things that you are going to make mistakes and I want you to embrace them. You know, don't be afraid to make mistakes as it shows that you're willing to try. But, and this is the big but on that one, remember not to make the same mistake twice as that only shows that you didn't learn from it the first time. And that's it. So thank you for very much for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of the Maid Summit. Um, there's a couple of free resources for you that we've made available, which includes the Domestic Cleaning Business Network Solo Cleanout Cost Spreadsheet, which is a fantastic tool to sit there and see how much you're actually making as a business and how much you really should be charging. I've talked a lot about sort of mistakes we made with pricing. Use this tool from day one to help you try and get your pricing right. And we've also included a discount code for you for your first course at the Domestic Cleaning Academy as well. You know, I've said right the way through, it's about learning from your mistakes. It's about finding time to learn more. Um, so I really hope to see you at one of those um, courses in the future. Thank you.